Okay, so in this video, we are going to be solving the following problem for a singly linked list. And what we want to do is we want to find the nth to last node in a given list. So let's just take an example here so we know what that problem means. We're given a list, let's say like this, where we have the data elements at each of the nodes A, B, C, D in this list. So there's four total elements in this list. And let's say that we want to get the second to the last node. So in this case, n would be 2. So if we were to define a function that was to give us the nth to last node where n is equal to 2, and we gave it this list as input, the node that we would obtain back would be the node that has data element c. So this should be the correct node that we would get back in this case. So that is the problem statement, and I would encourage you at this point, if you've never seen this problem or if you want to go ahead and brush up and try it yourself, pause the video, give it a shot, and if you have trouble or if you want to see how I solve the problem, then proceed along and we can uh, solve, this, solve this together. So what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be considering two different methods of solving this problem, and we're going to go through each method individually, and then we're going to, in between, code up this method uh, in Python. So we'll actually go through the method of solving it and then see how we can translate that solution into Python code. So let's go through the first method now. So the first method is the following uh, thing that we're going to do. We're going to take a list and we're going to calculate the total length of the list. That is, how many nodes are in this list that we're given. So in this case, it's easy to see there are four nodes in this list. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to count down from the total length that we obtain until n is reached. So what does that mean? Let's again take the example of n is equal to 2. So let's say that we calculate, we go through this list and we calculate the length and we find that the total length of this list is 4. So what we do is we start off at the head node and we go through each of the nodes one by one, all the while decrementing the total length. So here, we'll start off here, we have the total length is 4, and then we go on to the next node and we decrement the total length by one, which is three, and we check, all the while we're checking whether or not that total length is equal to n. So we check it here at the first node, it's not equal to four, so we move on to the next node, we decrement it by one, it's three at this point, we check if this is equal to n, three is equal to n, which is two, it's not. So what we do is we go on to the next node, we decrement n, uh, we decrement the total length by one. Now the total length is equal to two, as is n, and therefore we have found our node, and this is the node that we return. So that's the general idea of this first method, and now that we have this fresh in our head, let's go and minimize this and implement it in Python. So what I have here is I have a function prototype for solving this problem, print nth from last, which takes self since it's a class method, and also n, which is the nth to last node that we want to return. I've also created a linked list object uh, that has the elements similar to it does similar to what the example that we just went over does with a, b, c, and d as nodes. And then I have a call to it, which doesn't do anything at the moment, but will print out the example that we've been considering, the second to last node, which should be, in this example, C. So let's go ahead and refresh our memories as to what the first step is. So the first step in this is to calculate the total length of the list. And if you recall from an earlier video, which I'll make sure to link below in the description of this video, we have a function that already returns for us the total length of a list. So I'll link that video below. Uh, I'm just going to make use of that uh, of that function here. So basically I'm going to say total length is equal to, we call it length iterative. There's We did both an iterative and recursive implementation of how one can calculate the length of a linked list. Again, that's in the video description uh, below. So what we can do is we can actually put a self here since this is also part of the linked list class and then open parenthesis, close parenthesis as it does not take any parameters. So this will give us the total length of the list that we've defined. So we can actually just go ahead and print that out to verify that actually do what we expected it to. So let's write it and then give it a run. So we see here for, this is the total number of elements in our list, one, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna get rid of that print statement. So now that we have the total length of the list, what we're going to do now, let's refresh our memory again. We're going to count down from the total length until n is reached. So we'll start here at the head node and all the while we'll, we'll keep our count, we'll set our counting variable equal to total length, so we'll start there. And then we'll check whether or not total length is equal to n. If it is, we return, if not, we move on to the next node, and then we decrement total length by one, and we do that until we get to the end of the list. 
Okay, so let's go back to the code and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a variable which we'll call cur for current, and this will initially be equal to the head of the list. And we'll say while current, so while current is not null, we'll just keep moving through the list, all the while decrementing total len and also checking if total len is equal to n. So basically if the total length is equal to n, we found our node. So what we can do is we can say, let's say print current.data and we can return the node itself. Otherwise what we do is we just decrement total length by one and then we move along in the list. And the way we do that is we say current is equal to current.next. So at the end of this while loop, if we exit the loop without hitting the first return statement, that means that the n number that we received in the function was higher than the number of nodes we've actually gotten. So it's essentially out of bounds of the linked list. So if current is null in this case, after we've exited the while loop and haven't hit the return statement, that means that something went wrong with n. n is essentially an invalid number. So what we're going to do there is if current is none, we're just going to return. And that's that. So let's just verify that this actually does what it's supposed to do. Let me clean up this extra space here. So what I've done is I, again, I have this list ABCD, and then I've made already a function call to that list where I've set the n, uh, n number equal to two. So let's go ahead and write this and give it a run and see what we get. So let's see, so I think I returned current and then I'm also printing out the data element. So this is just the object corresponding to the node. That's why that looks like that. Uh, but before I return the node, I'm actually printing out the data element of the node, which is C. So we actually have the right node there, which is good. Okay, so let's now go back to the slides. I'll go over a second method for doing the same thing and then we'll code it up in Python. So the second method is this. So again, we have this as our example linked list, and what we're going to do is we're going to make use of two pointers, which we'll call P and Q. So P will initially point to the head of the list, and then Q will point to n nodes away from the head. So let's again take an example where we have n is equal to 2. We set P initially equal to the head of the list, and then we count n nodes from the head. So one, two nodes from the head. Q is pointing to this node here. So this is kind of our setup. Now what we do is we just move each of these pointers along the list by one each time. And whenever Q becomes null, we check where P is pointing and P will be pointing to the node that we care about. So let's actually follow this through. So we have, this is our initial setup. We move P over by one, we move Q over by one. So P is now pointing to the node with data element B. Q is now pointing to the node with data element D. And we check if Q is null, it's not. So we move along, again, one uh, along by one node for each pointer. And we check if Q is null, it is. So we see where P is pointing to, and P is pointing to this node here with uh, data element C, which is the same data element that we, the same node that we got from the other method uh, for the same example. So let's go ahead and see how we can code up this example in Python. So I'm just going to use actually the same function. I'm just going to, um, I'm going to comment this out so it doesn't run. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a comment. And then I'm going to write method 2. So method 2, again we have, let me just go back to the picture here. We have two pointers, P and Q. So let's initially set the pointers P and Q equal to head, and then we'll move we'll move Q n nodes beyond where P is. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and set P is equal to the head of the list, and Q is equal to the head of the list as well. And then let's move, let's essentially move Q n nodes ahead. And in order to do that, we're going to keep a count variable, which we'll initialize to zero, and we'll say while q and count is less than n, we're going to move q along. So we're going to say q is equal to q.next, and then we're going to increment count by 1. So now what we can do is we can make a quick little check, and, and basically if q is not, if q is null, then the number that we received, n, is greater than the number of nodes in the list. So if that's the case, if q is none, then we're just going to print out a message 
like this and return because we can't do anything with that if n is greater than the number of nodes in our list. So I'm going to say if not q print out, let's print out a message that says something like string of n. So we're printing out that as the number of nodes is greater than the number of nodes in list. And then what we can do after that print statement is just return. So otherwise, if q is not null, then what we can do is we can proceed and we can say while p and q. And essentially what we're doing in this loop just to go back to the picture, is while p and q are still not null, we're going to move them along in the list. So we're going to keep doing this action, keep moving them along. So if q is null, which in this case it is, then we check what p is, and then we return the data element at that node. So while p and q, we move p along, so p is equal to p.next, and we move q along, q is equal to q.next. And then at the end of this, well, all we need to do is just return p.data. So let's go ahead and run this. So I made sure that I saved it, and let's see what we get. So again, we get, let me just clear it just to make sure that you believe me that it's actually C from this run of it. So let me run it again. Indeed, we get C. So this is the node for n is equal to 2 using the second method. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or anything of the like, please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Thank you again, as always, for watching. All the support and subscriptions are very much appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.